Hello friend, you're now listening to a Bible study conversation from Colors of Hope Global. Thank you for your God, we thank you for your King. Let's just surrender ourselves in His presence. Let's just surrender ourselves in His presence. I surrender all. Ne manuzi ale ele takia zira va takia zira. Ne kabadi ale ele kesa ne mane kalira. We just surrender everything at your feet, Lord. We surrender everything at your feet. Every single thing you've given us. Oh, manakia sale bado kia teida. Ne mate sala manakia zisha takale teida. Ne kasi teida kila manakia zisha lavade koto yinda. Se kale da kia teida le bazo kia teida kila manakia zisha lavade kesera. Ne kasi ale da kia teida. Se kanti ale bando kia teida. Ne maso kade ande le bazo kade te kesa te bado kia teida. Oh, but I have a case of Sharia Bose Yarenda. But I just surrender everything to you. I surrender everything to you. No, just, just surrender to him. Surrender, surrender everything to him. Oh, my knock is a shade of Bade Kalera. I call it a Bade Kasumi. Surrender everything to his warm embrace. Oh, call him Father, Abba. Abba, Father, Daddy. He's the Father of the fatherless. Scripture says he puts the lonely in families. He puts the lonely in families. God is the only one that is is conscious to restore us into places and families and people that feel like home. He's mindful of us. He thinks of us. Make us that ekaleba baba kia de ba lebe kesa zeza zeza kia leda. Scripture says he orders the steps of the righteous and delights in his way. It pleases God to take a walk with you. He delights in your journey. He's willing to order your steps. Ne muso ni akede ba leda kesa de no 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 no. Na kuzi ale kaba baba ba kia zeda. Se shali ababa kia de. It just calls us sons. We are sons. We're sons. And if sons, scripture says, if sons, then we are heirs. We are heirs of our father. We have an inheritance in him. That's what it means to be an heir. So we may not have earthly inheritance, but we have an inheritance in God. He's committed to our life. He's committed to our life that he has over Nani Kosole Abandeka. He sent the Holy Spirit as a token of the commitment he has in our life. So every time we hear the Spirit of God, we follow the Spirit of God. Every time we are guided by the Spirit of God, every time we are comforted by the Spirit of God, we remember that God is with us. And he sent his son. But not only that, his son had to go so that the Holy Spirit of God will come and rest in our hearts. So that God himself will live in our vessels. He didn't choose vessels of clay he didn't choose a house to live in he chose our house our bodies our insides to live in to express through so the creativity of god is seen through me or the the, the wisdom of god is seen through me the strength of god is seen through me the joy of god is seen through me he chose me as his house i'm valuable i'm valuable to god it means if i'm not valuable anywhere else i'm valuable to god If I'm not loved anywhere else, I'm loved by God. If I'm not known anywhere else, I'm known by God. In Galatians 1 verse 15, Apostle Paul says, But when God, he said, when he pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by grace, 
when he pleased God, who separated me from my wonders woman, called me by grace. He was zealous, zealous unto the traditions of his fathers, zealous unto the religion, and he persecuted the Christian. He said, but when he pleased God, when it was time for God to separate him, and reveal his son, reveal Jesus in us. Lord, may we please you. May it please you to reveal Jesus to us. May it please you to separate us. May it please you. May it please you, Lord, to reveal your son in us. May it please you to show forth Christ through us. Find favor with us, God. Find favor with us. Find favor with us. Find favor with us. Find favor with us. It was Moses that said, If I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, show me your way that I may find favor in your sight. That if we find favor in God's heart, that he shows us his pathways. He takes us on his journeys so that we may still find further favor in him. God, that's our prayer tonight. That we find grace in your sight and that you show us the pathways, O oh Lord. That you show us the pathways. I show us the pathways of our life. Oh, Salia Bande Kuzula Bani Fadira. Scripture says, In the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. At his right hand, there's pleasures evermore. David said, You have shown me the path of life in your presence. It means that there's nothing higher than being with you, nothing higher than fellowshipping with you, nothing higher than surrendering to you. You've shown me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand, Pleasures forevermore, oh Lord, our Father. We've come again to enjoy your pleasures at your right hand. We've come again to fellowship with you. Not that you are not within us all day, but we've set out this time to say, This is the time, oh Lord, you will teach us. So, Lord, teach us today. Open our eyes, oh Lord, to see your word the way you've written it, to hear your word the way you've ordained it. That what exactly you want us to get from this word today. We will see by faith. And it will not be stolen from us. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So we'll just go straight to First John verse 4. I hope you've had a good day. Anyone listening to me, I hope you've had a good day. We'll just go straight to First John verse 4. Um, and we'll take half of it today. Oh, it's actually quite short, so we may be able to take the full thing. But let's see how we go. It says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether... No, we're actually in four, because yesterday we read three, uh, three verse 11. I, I made a mistake and sent in four the other day. Yesterday we read 3 verse 11. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> we, read, we read 3 verse 11 the last time we came. Then yesterday we didn't have a meeting. So we would have now read 4 yesterday, but we don't have a meeting. So we're actually in 4, which is very, it's very slow. But yeah, on Thursday we had prayers. You know, then we read 3, three verse 11, yes. So we're actually in 4. <laughs> Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. This is how we re recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which, is, which you have heard is coming, even now is already in the world. So, any, so how do we know that people are from God? Any spirit that 
that says that Jesus is God is from God. But any spirit that says that Jesus is not from God is the spirit of the Antichrist. It's Antichrist, anti-deceiver that God sent. You know, and he says this Antichrist is already in the world. Sometimes you'll be checking through, browsing through some sites, you see some, you know, images of people, different people believe in different things. People believe in Zodiac. That's the stars. People believe in the moon. People believe in just different things, really, different things, you know. And a lot of times, there are other religions also that would outrightly tell you that, you know, Jesus was one of the prophets. So he says that every speaking against the Godship of Christ is an antichrist spirit. It says, you dear children, you are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one in the world. Like we're praying. The spirit that comes in the world that speaks against Christ, it comes in different forms. It comes in the form of culture. It comes in the form of trends. It comes in the form of the big companies, you know, that set, that set things against what God has ordained. That sets trend against what God has ordained. That sets, that set um, policies against what God has ordained. That sets cultures, social cultures against what God has ordained. These spirits. They have the spirit of Christ. But scriptures now says that we have overcome them because the one in us is greater. It means that when we go through life, we have to vet everything from the glasses of, is this God? It's so easy to get caught up in trends. So very easy to get caught up in culture. It's even easy to get stuck, caught up in our own our own individual cultures, where we come from, our tribes, you know. And some, of course, some some things that our tribes, um, a community, you know, they are beautiful. But if any tribe that has things that are anti-God, anti, anti some oppression, you know, some injustice, Righteousness and justice at the foundation of the throne of God, scripture tells us. So we when we see these things rear its head in our tribes, in our cultures, in our social cultures, in our society, in trends, we have to check it as against the word of God and remind ourselves that this thing is not God. You know. And it says that we can overcome them, these things within the world, because greater is he that lives in us than they that live in the world. It says in verse 5, it says they are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. Things that are antichrist, those that are antichrist. It says, for we are from God and whoever knows God listens to us. But whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. When a man starts to walk in the knowledge of God, it's easy for him to take the truth of God. But when a man is not walking in God, he fights the truth. It's, that's just how it is. Some people can fight you down to, they can see black and then say, black is white. That it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. God does not care about things like that. You know, they can fight you to the last because the spirit of truth, they are not allowing the Holy Spirit to have expression in them. You know, once you know God, nobody has to tell you what you're doing is good or bad, to be honest. Like, like you know, you have an idea. You, you, you have your heart. Your heart breaks. You, 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 may, you may be so upset and, you know, your heart gets toughened. But once you think on God, you know that that's not the right state to be in. And you can say, Holy Spirit, help me. You know. So once we know God, once we know God, once we listen to God, it shows because when the truth is preached to us, we can receive the truth because we don't carry that spirit of falsehood. It says, dear friends, let us love one another for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. 
Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. And like we said the last time, we said we're going to read um, 1 Corinthians 13. Love is not just um, emotions and butterflies. Love is a commitment. Love is a character. Love is actually action, you know, and that love is very, very giving. So when we love one another, everybody knows that we are born of God. So one of the signature of a Christian is our ability to love people. And what is that love? Love is patient, love is kind, love does not boast. So it's good for us to sometimes go through that scripture again to really know what, what, is, what is this love? What are we supposed to look like as Christians? What is that our signature? So everybody born of God is supposed to be able to love. And love comes a lot from forgiveness. If we're not able to forgive, how, how then can we love? Because we have to continuously forgive. <clears throat> That's why that, 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 that analogy in scripture, when it says, how many times should I forgive? And he gave an impossible, you know, um, a, a, an impossible number because you must consistently forgive. You must consistently forgive. Love is very giving. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. It's true. You can't be in a state having an argument, for instance, with a person and think on God and think about Jesus and think about God. Let God just, you know, and you still be in that argument. Once you think on God, God starts to show you why and which and what and what you should do to make it better. Sometimes you are the one that resists him. But whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his son, his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. So love is giving. Like I always say, like love is giving. And it's not just material things. God, love gives itself. Like love gives itself for another. It's very self-sacrificial. It's not looking for its own way. You know, it's looking for how to make someone else better. It's not seeking its own right. It's looking for how to establish the other person's right. You know, so <clears throat> God loved his son, yet because he loved us, he sent into the world so that we might live through his son. Apostle Paul said when he pleased God to reveal his son in, in us, in me, it means that when God comes to your heart, in your life, then he begins to reveal Christ in you. And people look at you and they see glory. But look at you, they see such beautiful creativity. They look at you, they see wisdom. They look at you, they see peace. Because peace is what Christ brings into our life. They look at you, they see joy. So Christ, he says, he sent his son into the world that we might live through his son. So it pleased God, as Apostle Paul tells us, to reveal his son in us says this is love not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins is it possible for us to do that like i said love is not seeking our own way love is seeking the way of the other person love is giving it's not thinking about my rights so god wasn't thinking about himself he loved god that he sent his son so when you when we claim to love we are the ones that make that atonement like, we're the ones that do the action, do the forgiveness, you know. We're the ones that take take the responsibility of it, you know. So God sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also have to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. Every time we think towards patience, we think the most kindness. God is with us in our heart. It's not that we should be stupid in love, but that at every point, in every situation, in every decision we are making, we are making it out of the heart of God and the love of God for that person. Because when God looks at you and looks at your spouse, for instance, he loves your spouse, he loves you. <laughs> so when you are seeing, if you have to see the matter from the heart of God, sometimes our spouses have shortcomings, but God loves them anyway. God is patient with them. So we too sometimes have to be patient with them. Not sometimes, every time. We have to be patient with them. Do be led by God and directed by God in what to do. Pray to God, but 
we always have to find a place to love them enough to be patient with them. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he is in us. If his love is in us, his love, he lives in us and he made complete in us. So that's how we know that we live in him because he has given us his spirit. And that spirit is a spirit of love. That spirit is a spirit that brings us always to love. It's so important because love never fails. So for every dealing in life, if we follow the principle of love, if we follow what God is asking us to do, if God says be patient with this person, the situation will rectify itself. But when we are too hasty, when we go on our own way, we fail. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely in, on the love of God, on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in, in them. This is how love this is how love is made complete among us so that we will be confident on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like, that we're in this world that we were like Jesus. Now it says perfect fear. I think that's, that's, that's the way it says it in KJV version. It says perfect love casts out fear. So this one says there's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made in perfect love. So at every point in time, that's why when the devil tries to guilt you, it's not God that is speaking. It's not God that is speaking. Because perfect love casts out fear. God is not the one condemning you. It's the devil. God can direct you. He can just throw your mind towards a thing. He can lead you to restoration in a thing. He can show you, he can reveal to you the areas of your wrong, or he's never the one condemning you because he loves us. And even in our dealings with others, we cannot stay in self-preservation. Self-preservation is one of the things I try my best to get out of. We can't stay in self-preservation. Self-preservation is preserving ourselves so we don't get hurt. That's what self-preservation is. Most times we are afraid of getting hurt, and that's why we preserve ourselves. And it's something I keep worrying in my heart. I ask myself always, am I sure I'm not in self-preservation? When anything happens, I'm like, God, is this self-preservation? Am I, am I trying to preserve myself? Because most times we're, we're afraid to get hurt. So we can't sometimes do the will of God because we're afraid to get hurt. We don't have the ability to stay with people, be long-suffering towards people, be patient towards people, be loved to people because we are afraid that they may not do it to us or that they might hurt us. But in love, in the love that is God, we do not look to preserve ourselves. We allow God to preserve us as we do the love of God. We are sure that if God sent us, not the one we sent ourselves, but that if God sent us on a journey to love others and those places and people that he has asked us to be patient with, to be long-suffering towards us, if we actually follow God, then we need not fear because even if we hurt, God is the balm of Gilead. He would heal our hearts. In fact, he will make us stronger 10 times. He will make us better, purer, more refined than the beauty of gold. So we always have to believe God to love. So we have to trust God to love. You don't trust your spouse. You trust God of your spouse. <laughs> That's how it starts. That's how you do it. Because you can't trust them because they will hurt you. You trust them today, tomorrow they are just annoying. You just wonder who, how you give them your heart, you know. So people are fleeting. But if it's God that brought you and your spouse together, you have to trust the God who brought you the spouse to trust the spouse. You have to trust the God who brought you the friend to trust the friend. You have to trust the God who brought you the company, the, the, the career to trust the company. You can't trust them. You have to trust that God has placed you here. And because he has placed you here, he will deliver you. You have to trust that God has given you this spouse. And because he has given you this spouse, he will help you. So whatever he has given you and you know that he has, that's why it's good to check out the areas where God meets us. 
like, oh, you remember that? Oh, this was the day that I prayed for my spouse. And then it came like this. And I, I thanked God like this because I knew it was God. You know, those things that we keep in our hearts, we, it's good to remember that see, when I started, I knew this thing was God. So no matter how it's going right now, I still believe it's God. So that it's not that you are trusting the situation. You are trusting the God that joined you to that situation. There's no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made in perfect love. You may be in love, but you are not in perfect love. There's a love that comes from above that you can live out. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has also given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. You can't claim to love God who you do not see and not be able to do that love of God towards other people. So if you are not able to love others, then you're a liar. Now, I've tried to explain, and if you've not listened to the previous message, I've tried to explain that loving is not the same as trusting or giving or entrusting yourself. Like, you can love your spouse and still understand that because of their humanity that might come up, they may hurt you, they might, they might hurt you. It's not, loving is not trusting that they will never hurt you. <laughs> Do you understand? Also, it's trusting, it's more of trusting God that loving is. Also, we know that whatever loving God takes us towards, he will protect us there. So we don't need to protect ourselves because once we start thinking in pres pres preserving ourselves, we, we lose the ability to do the perfect love of God. We start saying, you know what? Let me not go. Let me not be like, you know, let me not, let me not. So there's, love, there's, there's fear. There's fear in that. But God has called us to love. He has not called us to love foolishly, but he has called us to love. If we follow what God is saying at different times, even when it looks foolish and we are being long-suffering in a situation towards a person, we will find that we will reap its benefits. You know, even when we don't look right, even when it's hard, when we're able to triumph over our heart and our hurts and just ask God to heal us and still be love, we find that perhaps there are even relationships where the devil is trying to get at us and make that the relationships don't work, you know? So we find that when we are the ones that hold on and preserve what God is asking, not the one God is not asking, but what God is asking us to preserve, then it bears much, 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 much fruit. But we always have to know our three, our 12, and our 120, like I said. You have to know who you are entrusting to, who God has asked you to journey with, and who God has brought in your life for a season, you know, who God has removed it from your life after a season, you need to be discerning every day in what God is saying regarding your relationship. That's why you have to be discerning if you're a single person, how, who to marry. So that on that journey, no matter how hard it gets, you can remind yourself, it's God that gave me this person, it's God that gave me this journey, and it will work because God is the one that has determined it. Hallelujah. It says, and he has given us this commandment. Anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. So when we know those God is asking us to love, rather we owe all men in this world love. We owe them patience, long-suffering. We owe them God, right? But then our own rest and entrusting ourselves, like I said in the last teaching, God has to give us that wisdom to know who and who we entrust ourselves to. All right. So that's the word for today. Do you have any additions? Do you want to add anything? Do you want to share what God said to you while we read scripture? Okay, in the absence of any of that, Father, we just bless you for your good. All right, go on.
Okay. All right. Okay, so I was waiting for someone who wanted to share, but we'll have a call. They've, they've asked to call me, so, all right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for sharing us your love in this season. Lord, we ask for one thing this night, that you give us wisdom. Wisdom on how to love. Wisdom on how we trust. Wisdom, help so that we don't self-preserve, that we are living fearlessly in your love towards others that you've asked us to, how you've asked us to do it, that we're not self-preserving because of past relationships, that we're able to serve everyone with the love of God in every season God gives us, that yet we know where to entrust ourselves. Lord, give us that wisdom to differentiate between loving everyone and trusting and entrusting ourselves to everyone in this season. Lord, make our hearts permeable that we are able to love. We are able to owe man, owe no man anything but the love of God. And Lord, heal our hearts. If anyone is struggling from being abandoned, from being hurt by parents, by, by siblings, by friends, colleagues, Lord, we just extend your healing reign right now. The blood of Jesus heals totally your mind in the name of Jesus. Heal us, oh God. Heal us. Heal us, Father. Heal us from the sole of our feet to the crown of your he our head. Heal us and make us able ministers of this gospel and able to love and love, give your love, able to champion your cause in lives of others, yet not doing it unwisely, but doing it wisely in the amount you're asking, not for our own self-gratification but for your glory teach us where to rest our heads and teach us where to serve thank you daddy in the name of jesus we pray amen thank you guys